All right, y'all. Well, we are live. And uh, Evan, man, what's going on? You here? Yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me. Really, really appreciate it. How have you been, buddy? It's been a little while. Yeah, man, I've been good. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the channel, bro. Yeah, All it's right, always a pleasure. Well, we are live. Yeah, I think I've got I've got an echo. And uh, you got an echo, Evan, man. What's yeah, going? Got an echo. But now, now we're good. No more echo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bro, me, yeah. Um, I'm, just so I'm just knows, seeing your. Just so everyone knows, like we we literally we haven't talked to each other before this live at all. So this is uh this is it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we don't um we don't know, but um, what what do you think? Um, what do you what's your um perspective? I mean, are you do you think it's DCA ter territory yet, or are we waiting until two K here? I don't know, man. Um, <clears throat> you know, I have bids going all the way down to two K. I'll be honest with you. Um, I bids going down to one K. Really? I'm not buying nothing at two K. If it goes to two K, I'm. <laughs> You're out. Uh two K. Oh man. Oh man. It depends where ETH is at. It depends where ETH is at. Because if ETH's at like six hundred bucks and Bitcoin's at two K, there's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. So are you short right now? Or are you long? Like, I, I haven't talked to you since we were on Crypto Faces show. Like, oh yeah, a few weeks ago. So, what you been up to, man? Like, in life. Um, so yeah, no, yeah, I was, um, let's say I was in Costa Rica for about a month in Mexico city as well. Um, that was a lot of fun. That was, um, about a month or two ago. That was awesome. Now I'm back in Florida, which is pretty good. And, uh, really like Central America. So I'm looking more into it, but, um, yeah, in terms of trading, I'd say September, very good month for trading. October, really good month. November, pretty good month. We're in kind of a little bit of a tough time to trade just because this time of year, and it was like this last year where when you get into the kind of the holiday season from like, and, uh, you know, right before Thanksgiving all the way to like maybe New Year's, you know, Jan beginning of January, less trading volume, always a lot of weird volatility. So it gets a little tougher. So yeah, this is like a tougher time in my opinion to trade. Um, in terms of what I'm looking at, let me, um, if you want me to share my screen. Yeah, um, man, bring it up bring it up so yeah i mean th this is like kind of a tougher tougher thing to kind of so there, there's two main views here you know, there's two main possibilities now you know the one possibility that we would um you know get from these kind of split our size on the 16 hour curving downward you know 12 hours split our size curving downward is something of you know kind of this this nature like where it happened here where you you know you just come down you know you're done with your little rally upward and you just come down but you know we also have the possibility, which um, I believe probably sometimes what happens, you know, the RSIs start to curve up a little bit more if you look at kind of the 16 hour and this could easily come up a little bit higher. And we are getting into kind of the weekend here. So it's possible that we come up to this area, you know, kind of this, excuse me, this spider line right there, come up mm -hmm. to that and then possi possibly reject. Now, the highest I could kind of see us going, at least in the short term, is going to be our 300 weekly moving average. That's going to be a pretty big place. And I think odds are pretty high that we reject off of it, that we kind of get up to this point and reject off of it if we do get that high. We obviously will test this at some point. It's just a matter of do we test it now or do we test it, you know, in a few weeks, a few months when it gets lower at other places right there. So that's what I'm looking at right there. In terms of a more long-term perspective, and this is, you know, important because we're getting into... I would say a big, big area where it's going to be a good kind of long-term buy for a DCA. If you, you know, haven't started already, um, I want you to look right here at this kind of red, kind of this red area over here on the two week. And this could get into the red. This, you know, I, I'm waiting for this to kind of play out. I think our rally could end as soon as kind of this red dot confirms right here on the two week. So as soon as we get into the red here, this is going to be a big DCA opportunity. November, of 2019 all the way to August of 2020. So about, you know, eight to 10 months of a good DCA opportunity. You know, if you wanted to invest 10 grand, I would be, as soon as this gets into the red, put a grand in every month for the next 10 months. And, you know, I don't think, I don't know if, uh, probably most people would agree with me. I don't think the odds are very high that we're going to, you know, just go straight back up anytime soon. Like, I think it's going to be more choppy for a good amount of time, similar to, you know, over here, or over here in this bear market. And I think it's going to be a little bit more like 2015, this kind of area, 
rather than mini bull market and then all the way down with the pandemic. And then, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit more like this area and kind of the same thing, too. I mean, this would be the case for August 2015 all the way to May 2016. So about a year period. I mean, I think 2023 overall is going to be a really, really, really good accumulation um, year for Bitcoin and ETH especially. I don't know how bullish you are on ETH, but I think especially if ETH could come down to like, you know, 600, these big areas I'm looking at with my um, trusty spire lines down here. If we have, which I'm hoping for, I'm kind of hoping for a kind of more of a capitulation downward. Because I think if we come, yeah, because it'll be more obvious we hit the bottom if we have kind of a capitulation downward. And what would kind of, you know, strengthen that would be the um, 16 day, 16 day red dot here, which kind of cancels out your, um, your bullish div right here on your uh, 16 day that confirms in six hours. I think this could bring us down quite a bit. Um, we also have possible black swan events. Russia could do something. I mean, it's getting, they're it's stopping the power there. I think anything with that could kind of make all markets go down quite a bit within the next few months here. So that's what I'm kind of waiting for. If ETH gets to kind of this range, you know, between kind of 600, 700, all the way down to like 300, I think that's going to be a really good, like that's enough where, you don't need to invest that much to make a lot of money because you get if you get in at like 500 and even if you just get to like, you know, 11K yeah. or maybe say you only get to like, you know, even five, so even say it's just a double top. I mean, you still got an eight to 10 X. I'm being real conservative here. I mean, it could obviously go a lot higher. It could go to, I'd say, you know, up to 15 K in the next bull run. But that's a big opportunity right there. Yeah, I, I agree. I have like a similar outlook. You know, maybe we'll come down to that area and form like some kind of inverse head and shoulders or something. But yeah. um, no, I, I do have a similar outlook to you. I, I don't think that the bottom is in. Um, I haven't really been looking at market cipher on those higher term time frames here. Let me put your let me put your face back on the screen here. Yeah. See this beautiful background that took this picture in Maine. Yeah, that is beautiful, bro. You've been you've been traveling a lot. See, I'm, I'm jealous of you. I want to go to Costa Rica. Like, I wish I was actually, like, living in Costa Rica. That's my dream place to be. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really cool. I'm thinking of going to Ecuador next. Ecuador looks cool as well. It would be nice, nice. to uh, get out of the cold, man. It's so cold right now. Crypto winter where I'm at. Oh, yeah, I was just up north for, you know, feeling like 30-degree weather, 40-degree weather for the first time since, like, last, you know, Christmas. And I was like, holy, man, that was, that was cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. Can you see my screen? Because I shared my screen with you. In, in yeah, yeah, I, I can. I'm also watching the, um, you know, the live on my phone. But I'll, I'll make the Discord thing big. So I should be. Yeah, I can see you. You okay. got all the. Um, yeah, I see you. I yeah. See yeah. So like basically, you know, what I'm what I'm looking at is very similar to you. So I've, I've noticed something and I don't know if you've seen this. But um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close off all this this junk here. This is just the local range that I, I've been trading today. But um, yeah. I'm going to go to the Bitstamp time frame, and I'm going to go to the monthly. And you use some of those weird time frames, bro. But um, it is yeah. interesting <laughs> that uh, for the past three bear markets, we've bottomed out in between the, uh, the, 8, the 786 and the 886 FIB levels. And we're there oh. right now, like literally right now. But um, I don't really see – we're not at like a level of support, right? So if we did bottom out here, mm. it would take – it would catch me off guard because it's like, well, wait a second. You know, we just closed a monthly candle now below the 786. And so that candle closed, although it's just slightly below, is it I, – on some exchanges, I think it's below, but it's like right there. It would surprise mm. me if this was the bottom. I would expect right now to come at and at least retest these uh, 2019 highs around like 13,800. And that's uh, a big level. That's the 400 weekly moving average right there. Yeah. So it's like right in that zone, bro. Um, it's right in that same zone. And I think we're probably going to get some other kind of event, some kind of last shakeout. If this really is the bottom, it's just too easy. It's just too easy. 
you know? Yeah. The, the other thing too, I obviously, you know, you know, then the last bear market to bond out at the 200 weekly moving average, the bear market before like 2015, I believe it was somewhere around the 200 weekly moving average. Um, the pandemic was a 300 weekly moving average. It depends. It usually always bottoms out at a big weekly moving average. So Just the regular moving average or, or, or the, um, I believe the regular. Yeah. The, the weekly, yeah. Moving, um, I think the M, just the MA moving average, I believe. Um, Let's why am on, I? I'm this is something put it on I should. The 200 know. right now. Just check it out. <laughs> yeah. The 200 were way below. That's a 90 200. Be careful. <laughs> um, the 500 weekly moving average is at around 11K. So that's another big area, obviously. Um, oh, wow. We are way below that now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that that didn't do jack in the last like yeah that was just like yeah. everybody kind of thought that was a big area and then it's just like nope <laughs> what moving average did you say that level the 400 week yeah 400 weekly is about 13 7 somewhere somewhere around there that's a pretty big area there's not enough like there's not too much historical support there but i do think it is a i mean we should keep an eye on that level you know what i mean um yeah i, I three yeah I do. You know what's really, really like funny? Level. What's funny? What's funny is there is a guy who, um, one of my um, fans, who would post on every, every like channel I was on or every video I put, he would post like, I think the bottom is going to be thirteen point eight k, thirteen point eight k, and now it's getting to that point where the four hundred weekly moving average is right there. Hmm. He could be watching this Delta Nine. Nice. He's been saying it for months. If he gets that right, that's going to be wild. So um, just so everyone knows, this is Evan Aldo. Go ahead and check out Evan Aldo on YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel. Let me go to it right now. Um, go ahead and subscribe to him. He does some really good TA, and it's uh, it's like higher term stuff, right? You're not really much of a scalper, are you? Not as much, you know. I do do scalps um, when when the time arises. I don't use as many like lines of support and resistance as you, but um, I do do scalps when it when it arises. But definitely not as much as as you. But I do. Um, it's a little bit more higher term now, definitely like a lot of swing trades. Yeah, the sixteen um, day and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean that's more of just a macro thing to kind of see, you know, where we could uh, potentially bottom out in the good places to get in, kind of for for long term here, but um. No, I learned a lot from, um, especially the scalp trading strategies are very, I learned them from your course, most of what I uh, use for scalp trading, except I use a lot more spider lines. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, guys, so make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe to Evan Aldo. Um, so are you in any trades right now, bro? Like, are, are I'm in trades? like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in two shorts, but I'm not like extremely confident on them. I am in a Bitcoin short and ETH short, kind of just betting. We've already kind of hit the top of the split RSIs kind of on the uh, 16 hour and the 12 hour in Bitcoin. But it's a little like a little risky because I see there's definitely a decent case to be made for a pump up to like 18K, even 17.6. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, those big areas that we have ahead of us. So. Um, right now is a little bit, a little bit tough, I would say for, you know, more of the, um, the swing trades, but the scalp trades, I'm sure you're killing it. It looks like you are in that, uh, that buy bit account right there. Yeah. I'm in a, I'm in a few scalps, bro. Like I'm, I'm actually in a little long from right, right <coughs> down here from, uh, this trade that we, I, I took this morning. And then I did short yesterday when we got that big old wick to the upside. But, um, other than that. Uh, I'm 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 short from around like around just below 19k and I'm long from well I was long from 15400 but I added a little bit to that so now I think it's around 16k that I'm long from so I'm actually kind mm -hmm. of I am feeling a little short term bullish I don't know I don't know if like what are your thoughts on this bro cuz I've been I've been leaning a little bit more short term bullish right now just because of like the daily and the four hour and the fact yeah. that we've been down in this range for so long. If, if the price is going to come down lower, unless we have some kind of black swan event where a whole bunch of money is going to leave the market, there's going to have to be some kind of liquidity grab. There's more shorts than longs right now. I'm getting paid just to be long. Um, I'm pretty yeah. Sure. And it's like, man, there's just so much juicy liquidity to be grabbed here. Uh, especially like the the 19k area, like that massive support resistance flip that we have around 19k, where we were just 
basically dipping below 19k you know mm. for, for basically half a year holding basically holding like the the previous uh bull runs all time high so i'm i'm almost kind of thinking like we come up and back test that previous bull run all time high around 19k which just so happens to line up nicely with the uh the 200 moving average on the 4 hour but that's besides the yeah point. I think we got, you know, the 300 weekly moving average um, is at around 18 flat. I think that's a big area. If you look at the, um, what for the bullish case short term, if you look at the hourly, I believe that would give you kind of the uh, case for bullish short term. And if you look at, yeah, I believe yeah. go on market side would be, the RSIs are kind of split and curving back up, I believe. So that's what, um, that could bring us up a little bit. Um, but wait, what, yeah. do you look, what do you look for on RSIs? Because because when I'm when I'm looking for upside on RSIs, I want to see them like tight, as if there's only one RSI. Like for me, that that tells me that we're <laughs> gonna come up. So like, yeah, when you see them split like this, that tells you that there's more upside to come. Like, it's not necessarily, but it means there's a possibility. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if, if it's like more together right now and they're curving down, it means that they're probably going to curve down until they get to like where they were there and then it comes back up. You know what I mean? So that's the okay, two things you. you look at for our size, like split and curving up, split apart and curving up or together and curving up. You know what I mean? Right. Which, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like there almost. Yeah. You see how they're split and you came up a good amount. Um, yeah. You cur I mean, start curving five up right and, here. Yeah, like that. That would be the the main kind of bullish case right now to come up. If you think we're getting up to you know eighteen six or whatever, um, how long do you think that would take? Do you think that could take a while? Quickly? Any guess on that? You know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I mean, what a stupid yeah. answer. But I'm I was <laughs> surprised at how long it took us to finally break above seventeen k, man. I mean, like um, that high that we had around seventeen k. That was our high since November 14th, and we didn't break above it until yesterday. So it's like that took so long. Like, I, you know, I, I, lo I longed it on Monday, the 21st, and like I'm holding it and I'm holding it and I'm holding it. And I'm expecting like a pretty quick move back up to the top of the range after such a massive drop. Like I was I was expecting recovery to happen sooner. and um, mm. And even now, it's like just the, the the volatility is so low like i was hoping we would either get more of a harsh rejection from uh the six juanita but it's been like this slow kind of like even asia didn't really dump us last night and then this morning we had like a big wick down and we've got like a swing failure from the local low but we haven't had much follow through and like new york closes in in three hours so it's like you know i, I just don't know man like the it's taking a long time for stuff to kind of happen in this range down here. So it's kind of leaving me hanging. Like, like what the heck is going to happen? You know, you got people calling for much lower. You got people calling for much higher right now, the 12 hour giving a red dot and the daily, uh, not VWAP starting to curve over. Yeah. That's but the bearish case. Those that's two the bearish case. Yeah. But also, you know, just to bring out a little Carl from the moon TA, we do have this inverse head and shoulders right here. Oh yeah, you know. And our and, technical uh, target is probably what is that? Eighteen k the technical target for yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Eighteen k. Yeah, that would, that would bring us right up to the three hundred weekly moving average. So we could test that. Yeah. Yeah, and check. It's this, hard though. to say right now. Check this neckline <laughs> of the uh, of the head and shoulders mm -hmm. is also the uh, the golden pocket. So. Oh. It could be that we just come like over the weekend do kind of nothing maybe come down here we would have a cme gap around this area so we would oh. come up fill the gap and then come up to our 18k target uh next week is is, is a possibility i yeah. like that i like that because that means i'm gonna my shorts are gonna do well that's low enough for me to take profits oh yeah oh, oh so oh so you're short from here you haven't taken profit I yet you yeah, know, I haven't. I, my profits are at um. Oh man, where is it? It's a little bit like it's. Don't it's say around it, bro. there. Don't say it. Market makers are going to come. Stop hunting. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not going to say exactly, but it's um, it's a little bit, you know, it's it's probably somewhere around. I don't know the exact number, but somewhere around where you think it's going to go. Um, I believe that's a high volume note as well, around 16.5, 16.4 there um, that I have. Yeah, somewhere around there, that area, um, which is pretty obvious, you know, where people would be taking some profits on the shorts. I mean, it's a big area of visual support, um, at least. And yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like what you mentioned. It's more boring. I think this last December was kind of like this as well to a certain extent. I think last December is obviously more bearish, but you get this time of year, I think less people are kind of trading. So you get a little weird like sideways volatility more so. And you get those like pumpy dumpy weekends. Like um, you know, someone shared in my Discord, like all these people dancing. It was like the pumpy dumpy. It's like this dance move. Um, so you kind of get that a little bit. Um December, yeah, I don't, it's not the easiest month to trade, at least for swing or day trades, because you're just waiting a while. But the scalps, I'm sure there's always any, any time, 24 7, any time of year, scalp trades are always pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's always good to be time. trading the local range, bro. If it weren't for that, I wouldn't be making any money trading. Um, you know, that's not true, actually. I've gotten into some good swings, but they're rare, right? Um, yeah. So Great Life says uh, he's seeing a bullish div on the one hour. Are you right? Yes, you're right. That is a bullish div on the <coughs> one hour. And the one hour is looking kind of good. Like I would say it looks bullish to me. The only problem is we, we've been having so many conflicting signals on Market Cipher. Um, like we've been having bearish divs and bullish divs at the same time on like different time frames. Yeah. You, you know what that means, Jason? What does that mean, Evan? Because I, I don't know. That means... That means you normally just go sideways and nothing too significant happens mm. from That's my experience. Yeah, it usually just cancels each other. It's just a bull and bear fight and nothing significant happens really. Yeah. Shout out to Dread Mining in the chat. What's going on, Dread Mining? And um, so Bitcoin Game, he wants to know, Evan, if you could quickly explain your strategy, like your, your basic trading strategy to the extent that you uh, can do that quickly in a, in a YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share the screen. There, there's a few I could show you guys that um that I like to um you know kind of use here. Uh, I'm not going to give you you know everything here, but um let's see. I'm sure. um, he's not going to give all the sauce, guys. You know. Yeah, I'm not giving. Not he'll giving give you everything, a free but... sample, but he's not going to give you the ingredients list. You know. Let's see. Why is my I'm trying to get? Oh, hold on. I'm As you can to... see by the thumbnail, guys, this video is trademarked. Juicy analysis is trademarked. <laughs> Let me just um, let me edit my. Now I should be able to share my screen. Here we go. That's good. That's good. So let me go on my. Uh, you should be able to see right now. It should be coming up on the e chart. So I'll show you guys. Let's see. I mean, there's a few different things I like to do. I'll show you a trade I took the other day on. Um, I believe it was on. Yeah, an ETH. Just a typical. And this is kind of similar to your strategy a little bit. Um, and this works well in this type of environment. So when ETH first hit, I believe um, this kind of area up here, this spiral line, I was keeping my eye on it. You know, I had my you know, notification right there, and let's do out a little um, little vertical line right here, kind of where we uh, where we first hit it, I believe. And then what I look at, I started my four hour, and I looked at how the VWAP was starting to curve down as we were playing around with this area. So that was good. That's what I'm looking at right there, and then. What I'm looking at to a certain extent here um, is, yeah, the spiral line displays a little bit different. I think it's a little bit higher in the lower time frames, but two hour, two hour bearish div almost. This was pretty good. So tender. I'm trying to remember how we got into that hourly bearish div confirmed right there. Came down to a certain extent, but um, and then right there. So believe. I'm trying to even remember this one, but basically, you know, this didn't work out as well, but bearish divs with money flow coming out right there, brought you down. Don't have any, you know, place other than you know, psychological 1300 coming down, but this was pretty good right here, especially with the four hour curving downward red dot and then 15 minute right there. And then short position. Um, where was the one I would have taken? I know I did take this trade yesterday. Um, and then got in as this confirmed right around here. I think I put my stop loss around here. And then I was a little bit more. Yeah, this was a perfect risk reward ratio right around a 1.0. Put the stop loss above a high volume node. 
So this worked out pretty nicely right there and then took some profits here. And I believe, yeah, that's a trade. I actually I think I might've just got stopped out depending on where I got in. I got to check on that one, but yeah. Also, let me show you more of a long-term type of strategy here. So let's go, go to it on Bitcoin. And what I was looking for is my VWAP to start curving down, especially with split RSIs curving down. Crypto face likes to talk about this. So RSIs were very split apart. You know, VWAP was curving down here. And what I'm looking, the place I'm looking to enter this is right as the, around the 45 minute hourly, these curve into the, into the red right there. So this is more of a swing trade or more of a longer term trade, but right there is where I kind of got into this and believe, um, kind of giving away too much almost. I'm not going to say where the stop loss is, but there's a few different places you could put it and you could try to come down to, I mean, this is the uh, 300 moving average on the 45 minute. Not too much there. I would kind of say the first take profit around 16.5. This uh, high volume node area is going to be big. Yeah. This is a potentially pretty good trade. And this would, this is what I'm thinking will happen. Like kind of what you were saying, we get to this point and then we could pump up after. Maybe we get to this point on Monday and then we could pump up early next week or something, have that volatility. Um, that's that possibility. Usually this, you know, this is a sideways market. Usually a trade like this would play out by now because I entered this, um, when did I enter this? Yesterday, obviously, yeah. later yesterday. So it's kind of just sideways, just boring the hell out of me. Nothing's really happening here, but this is a good potential one right now. Um, I, you know, I'd say a good amount of time, it will play out well. You do have the hourly, you know, these RSIs are kind of splitting apart, curving back up. That's would be more of the bullish case, but it's a weird market this time of year, um, like I've been saying, so... You know, that's that. And then the same thing for kind of, you know, this, the more scalp day trade type of thing. I mean, you look at price hitting the high volume nodes or the, let me go on logarithmic spider lines at these areas. And it's weird right now. We're just not hitting any spider lines, what I have. So it's more yeah. of a boring area, but you look at the high volume node, you know, prices respect in that area. You can do scalps off of this, like you like to do. So, yeah. Nice, man. So it's, it's pretty much the same as my strategy. It's just more relaxed, <laughs> waiting for confirmations yeah. and stuff like that instead of just trying to snipe the entry. But Yeah, uh, it's, it's more laid back, you know, just, just chilling. <laughs> shout out to uh, Crown Chakra TV in the chat. What's going on, man? Oh, uh, is that the, the one that raps about it? Yeah. Oh, is that the real one? Oh. I, I don't know tough. if it's the real one. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, maybe we should get you in here. We could have we could do a little freestyle. Oh I mean, yeah, you rap, right? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> as much as a white a white person wearing one of these hats can rap, I can, you know. This yeah, does yeah, yeah. My abilities a little bit the hat, but you know, uh, I do my best. You know, I mess around. I mess around with the bars. You know what I'm saying? How about you, bro? Do you rap at all? Want to spit? You know, I you? used to when I was in eighth grade. Um, or no, no actually, um. Was I think it was sixth grade or seventh? No, I think it was seventh grade or somewhere around there. I used to be kind of interrapping in the uh, community I grew up in. Um, it was tough, man. It was tough trying to like freestyle rap some of these kids because they were pretty good and you know it was, it was a rough time, but it wasn't too bad back then. Shout out to Crypto Yacht, man, in the chat. What's going on, bro? Oh, what's up, Crypto Yacht? It's been a while, Crypto Yacht. Yeah, it's been a while, man. Crypto Yacht, man. Where, where you been, man? <laughs> you, you are you ever gonna come? Yo, crypto, yeah. Why don't we get you on? Why don't we? Why don't we get you in the? Um, why don't we get you in the in, in this uh, live stream, bro? Why don't you hop on stream, crypto yacht? Oh, that would be ridiculous. Let's get some oh, yacht analysis right here. Come on, gotta have crypto yacht in, in yeah, the stream. Yeah, crypto yacht, man. Have have you have you traded at all, crypto yacht, in the past like six months? Bro, you should hop on right now, man. I'll call you on Discord. We'll get you in a group chat. Oh God, it will be a legendary Friday stream. Dude, I've been trying to have Crypto Yacht on my channel for a year now. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. I've been trying to get him on, but but yeah, he, you're you are uh, you are soundtracked in uh, one of his songs, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I believe so. One of the older, yeah, that was a while ago. I think yeah. I'm saying like Crypto Yacht is the man or something. I'm trying to remember, yeah, yeah, you're like Crypto Yacht is the man. <laughs> He sounds like Young Thug. He sounds. He reminds me of Young Thug a little bit, the way he raps. I'm going to message him right now on Discord. Let's, yeah. see, let's see if we can find him. Let's see. 
<clears throat> I think Young Thug's going to prison, or he's in prison, Young Thug, but um, he's a good rapper. Young Is he? Yeah, Young Thug. You should listen to Young Thug. He's a good rapper. Young Thug. Um, I don't, but (laughs) well, no, I. I, (laughs) Yeah, come on, man. Well, I. All right, all right. To be 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 honest, what's up? Do you think he's a good rapper? Young Thug or Crypto Yacht? Young Thug. You think Young Thug's a good rapper? He's not really my taste, but I think he's he's a pretty good rapper. If I listen to rap, I don't really listen to it. But oh, my friends who know like rap well say Young Thug is very good. Really interesting, man. Yeah, I think I don't know how I much thought, he's. I'll he's be honest I thought I thought he was a joke. I thought he was a joke when I first. No offense, to Young me. Thug. No, no, he's like he's legitimate. He is a kind joke. of a joke. I thought Two Chains but, was a joke. I thought Two Chains was a joke as well. What do you mean a joke? Like like just like, somebody? I, I thought it was like I thought it was somebody just like making like a meme song. Oh, oh, when like I first, someone showed me two chains. There was a song called Big Booty Ho. Oh, and someone showed it to me and I started laughing, thinking, oh, this is this is a great like just, you know, of what's become of like hip hop now. Like he's literally going to call himself two chains. Like, come on, man. Big Booty Ho. Come on. I thought it was a joke. Then I found out it was serious. And I'm like, whoa, this dude has like 10 million views on this song. That's crazy. You know? I mean, it doesn't really. It, it could have been a joke, and then people took it seriously. Yeah, so you maybe, just went it's with it. maybe it's that. Maybe it's that because because I find in my yeah. own life, like sometimes I'm like joking, and it just goes way too far, and then next thing you know, it's, it's real <coughs> life. You know. So. Yeah. You're not on Discord, bro. Yeah, I can't find you, crypto. Yeah, what the heck, bro? Why are you not on Discord? Uh. Yeah, crypto yeah, it's just too mysterious. Uh, that would be wild, if, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, let's like let's like the video. Let's like the video. Yeah. We got almost three hundred people in here. Only a hundred likes. You know that's that, that hurts our self esteem. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what asset I've been doing really well with, um, going along on for the past um couple months. Let's 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 hear about it, man. Silver. Silver. Oh yeah. Why don't you silver. why don't you bring up the silver chart, bro? And and let's Oh, let's I have some cool I have some incredible this is gonna blow your mind on silver. Oh man. So let me just show you first the um because we're all degenerates here. We're like this is the leverage silver fund on 2x leverage, it's the one I've been playing around with a lot. I want you to look at the monthly on this. Okay, let me make myself small here. Are you able to see it? I am. That's that is a very bullish divergence on the monthly. That's the opposite of what Bitcoin did at sixty nine k. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that I mean, I've been in kind of since I was getting. I kind of got lucky. I mean, to be fair, I've been getting in kind of like at twenty dollars. But this thing could go. I mean, let's just draw a fib level here. And I mean, silver. I know everybody's given up on it. You know. Um. I, you know, this could go, that was its all-time high. Silver's all-time high in 2011. This fund went down about 98% to the pandemic lows. I think in the next few years, you might be able to get up to 180 with this. I mean, I think you could at least get up to like here, you know, 50 something. And silver, let me just show you silver versus the S&P 500, which is <coughs> kind of a, this is top secret, guys. Like, I don't like to tell people about this. Pay attention. Look folks. at my ha- yeah, like this is this is secret information right here. This is juicy analysis. I want you to look at where I'm circling with money flow right here and right here. This is on the monthly, mm-hmm. and obviously, you know, silver it's it doesn't always outperform S and P 500. But look at where the monthly was in 1969 around there. It took a little bit while while for it to really play out. Um, like but look at that, it outperformed the S and P 500 by 30. X. That's interesting, bro. Now, you know, 1971, that's when Nixon took us off the gold standard. So that that's why. Up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly Man, why. Bro, but, market, market Cypher predicted the future before Market Cypher was even a thing and before Nixon yeah. was even going off the gold standard. Man, this is <laughs> some crazy stuff, you know, like going back in time and looking at how like TA lines up with world events like that. It's wild stuff, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then 2001 to 2011 right there outperformed the s p 500 by i mean steadily all the way up by 900 percent about right where that money flow was now look at where we are now i'm not i don't think it you know 
it could get back to this level. Maybe he, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be anything too, too crazy, but it doesn't really it could matter. get up. You know, you know, Peter Schiff is not paying me to say this. <laughs> it can get up to this kind of area, 300%, you know, kind of that, that trajectory. And what's interesting too, I didn't even realize this for the longest time, silver and NASDAQ, and NASDAQ's the closest thing we have to kind of, you know, silver. But look, 2000, look at where the money flow is, 2001, all the way to 2011, outperform from the NASDAQ. So it could outperform. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but there is a possibility it could outperform Bitcoin for, <laughs> for a few years here. I mean, I, I think that that's actually likely, um, <clears throat> considering all the things that are going on with money in the world. I'm a big believer in precious metals also, silver and gold, man. Yeah. Silver and gold, baby. That's and if you look at silver Bitcoin, you know, it follows this general kind of trajectory. We're at this area where Bitcoin may start to keep continue to outperform it. But I think what may happen for the next year or something, it could outperform it by maybe 100%, depending on how Bitcoin does, maybe up to, you know, some of these areas here. Let's try a FIB level. That's not even. Bro. Yeah, because Bitcoin always kind of outperforms it. But it is interesting. You know, I would say. I would say like my all the money that I would have put in kind of into the you know the stock market or in general for this year, I just put kind of in the silver and I've been doing kind of incredible. And I think I'll show you when I'm going to kind of convert it back maybe to, you know, S&P 500, Bitcoin, NASDAQ, whatever, you know, pick your poison. Look at these EMAs on the S&P 500 here. Um, see how they're turning gray. And now so in a in a bull market every time it turns gray is the amazing buying opportunity or you could just wait till they get bright again i would wait till it gets bright again because you're not missing out on too much you know right there right there right there now every time it looks gray it looks good every time it looks gray it looks is good it monthly until or the until oh, oh man look at that oh, sorry what were you saying is this the monthly or weekly here this is the weekly on s&p 500 yeah. yeah just look at that so what i'm kind of waiting for with silver or you know, I think even converting it to Bitcoin at this point too, when this gets bright, whenever this happens, you know, this could happen, even if we, you know, come up, if this happens in January, if that February, if we dodge this recession, I don't think we will. But whenever it turns bright again, that's where you get back into kind of risk on assets. And it's not, you're not, you're not catching the exact bottom, but you're getting close. And the S&P 500, right? See, oh, one, I think we're pretty due for, I mean, what's your view on it? I think we're, pretty due to come down you know, into a pretty bad recession here. Yeah, man, I, I, I feel the same. <clears throat> I feel the same way. Um, but again, it depends on like what the Fed does. Like, yeah, I see. I have like a hunch that. And this is based a lot on, you know, guys, get your tinfoil hats on everybody. You know, I think you're good with all the hairspray you got in. That will that will prevent the aliens from eating your brain. Yeah, yeah, I've been growing the hair out, put some you know, gel in it, but yeah, it looks good, man. You know, I, I've been trying to grow mine out, but uh, I keep cutting it off, so it doesn't work out so well. It, it gets it gets annoying because mine is so thick. Like mine looks ridiculous if I don't have any gel in it. Oh yeah, yeah. I I but, used to have long on. hair, so you know. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't I didn't know that. <coughs> yeah, man, long, oh, yeah. super long, bro. You know, I was a metal I was a metal guy, so. I think if, well, you, if you don't have long hair, you can't be a true metal guy, right? It is true, man. It is true. But um, I I have like a hunch because of like all this like great reset stuff that's going on, you know, fourth industrial revolution and like yeah. the new financial system. Like that's the great reset is just going over to a new, a completely new system, right? I have a feeling yeah. that like the the people in charge are going to be trying to pump their bags one last time before the new system comes in because, you know, we're just setting everybody up for, um, I mean, we, we've basically taken all the retail out of the market and the only people who can be in the market right now are people who have not been affected by like crazy inflation, who have cash on hand to go and buy cheap risk assets, then just do one right. more round of QE, print, 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 put all that money back into the the uh, Ponzi scheme stock market, and we get one last yeah. crazy blow off top. Meanwhile, the dollar hyperinflates in real life, but uh, the stock market can make a lot of money, you know? Yeah, that, that would happen. It would probably, the blow off top would probably be sometime in like 2024. Yeah, probably around the next election, like before it or something. Yeah. Before 2030, you know? Yeah. is a big year for all this stuff. 
Yeah, I think before, yeah, if you have that happen, then Bitcoin will probably go up as well, kind of in the next bull market. That would be the case for that. The main thing that that strengthens that argument is there's a lot of money on the sidelines. Like all the money printed on the sidelines, a lot of it is just sitting in bank accounts, CDs, stuff like that right now. And that could potentially go into the market to bring us up. Um, my question is, if it does go into the market, um, tell me what you think on this too. Say, you know, we have that blow up top, you know, all the risk assets do very well. NASDAQ, S&P 500. Does silver do well too? Gold and silver, could they keep going up? I think they may do well as well if, you know what I mean? Yeah, that I do, that I do not know, man. I really don't. I really don't know. I, I yeah. haven't actually. Um, silver and gold prices can be manipulated so easily. Yeah. Oh, based yeah. on like they fake supply and stuff like that. So I, I, I don't really know. I kind of look at gold and silver as just like my, my long term hedge, like um, just in generals. But I, I, I don't know, man. What do you think? Like, do you think? I, it- I think gold. <sighs> I mean, I look at the charts. I think gold and I think even if we do have, you know, an inflationary pump up, I think it's going to be hard to suppress gold and silver. It's easier to probably suppress gold because they could do more FUD with it and more like people know about it kind of. Silver may be a little bit tougher to suppress. And the, the interesting thing about gold and silver, interesting thing about those is they typically bottom out about halfway through S&P 500 bear markets. And I mean, my guess here you know, on this chart right here is we're about kind of halfway through it. You know, I'd see kind of the bottom being like mid to late next year. If we're halfway through it, those could have bottomed out. But yeah, I mean, what I would do for kind of for the S&P, for risk on assets, S&P 500, NASDAQ, all that, it's kind of if this gets in the brights, these EMAs get in the brights, then I would flip more bullish. And then if they just curve over back into the grays, which is unlikely based on the history, I would flip more bearish. It could be something weird like that, but I don't know, man. My main guess is just based on like unemployment data, based on things of that nature, Russia, everything happening, that we just, you know, we come down. And then um, I'm also curious, we should talk about the Dixie as well. I'm curious, do you think it's topped out? What's your view on the Dixie? Bro, I was just I was just doing some analysis on it earlier today, and I do think it it should come it will come down a little bit more. I mean, this is the biggest correction that we've had since um the, the that bottom there. And, Let me show uh, you something. Bro, Look, real, right. real quick, I just want to shout a few yeah. people out in chat. So Crypto oh, yeah, Carnage, yeah, yeah. shout out to Cryptocurrency, says the Fed and the elections are a huge catalyst. Anything can pan out, have a plan. That's the truth. Jitendra Yadav is sad that I'm not going to do a giveaway for Indians only. Bro, I'm not racist like that, man. I'm not <laughs> doing Indian only. Imagine if I came out here, bro. I'm going to give away only for white people. You know that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Millennial crypto investing is ready for Jesus to come back, <coughs> bro. I hope I'm ready for Jesus to come back. I hope I am. And um, names N- Nam Scene says they're gonna pump it now that everyone got wrecked on FTX. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? They just wrecked all retail. Everyone's out of crypto. People are selling their crypto who bought it 50k, and it's like now now it's time to pump it. Everyone's wrecked. All the money's been stolen donated to who the heck knows where places you can't say on youtube and all the money that was oh, stolen yeah. is going right back in to pump it back up baby um but anyway i'm sorry get get back to your point well actually i cut you off finish what you were gonna say about the dixie because you had something that sounded good um you were saying it's it's seen the biggest correction so you think it's gonna keep going down or yeah i do think it's gonna keep going down i, I and i think that could give some room for bitcoin to get a relief rally and even the s&p 500 to mm. come up to uh, basically the top of like the local range and like the macro golden pocket area from the low that we put in uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, I think that's one possibility. I'll show you the other possibility. And this is going back, you know, 40 years. But look what happened in 1981. Same exact place that we kind of re- this is wild too. this um, shout out to actually Ben Cowan for I, I learned this from him. I was watching one of his videos. And right here, and then look what happened. Basically where we are right now, a little bit lower, and then bam, right up higher. Show me that. You see that? Oh, interesting. You see right there, 19, August 1981? Yeah. The yeah, same yeah. exact place. Like, let me draw the, hmm. it may be a little hard hard to see, the horizontal line right there. See? Yeah, you're going to have to move place. That, take the fib off. Take the fib off. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. You know? Okay. Bro, just because you then... have a big fib doesn't mean you have to show it off to everybody, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right there. See. So we're essentially we could come a little bit lower here, and this would probably if we come a little bit lower, this would probably bring the S and P five hundred up to around four fifteen or yeah forty five fifteen, and then we continue forward. My guess, I'll tell you what my guess is here. I gotta I gotta take the fib out again. Let me um, um casually take it out here. Um, is casual, no big, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Is I think we're kind of halfway through this Dixie rally kind of, and if we we're halfway through the next place, the next place that we could top out at is around one thirty, and I think this is what Crypto Face thinks is going to happen. Don't want to put words in nobody's mouth, but I think he's he's talked about this area possibly being the top, like one thirty. It is a golden pocket. Um, and where we, when can we hit that? Around mid to late 2023 right there. The other thing that's, um, you know, kind of strengthens this argument. Look on the daily. I want you to look right here. You see this, you know, deep anchor wave right there. Look at what happened here. This was a nice um, over a, let's see, this was over a, how many bars? 180 day period. And then if we add, you know, 180 days from kind of this, this one approximately, um, 180 days would be around July of 2023. And I believe, let me just see what the gain was there. That was a 20%. So not saying this is going to happen, but I think there's a good shot. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's super interesting, bro. And we have some breaking news right now that uh, there's some bullish CBD on Bitcoin. So let's check out. Ooh. Yeah, let's yeah. check this out. You know, um, let's see. Is this going to work? Yeah, I, I see your I see your screen here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Ah. Uh -huh. All right, <coughs> let's see. Do we have bullish CBD on Bitcoin? Yeah, there there is some bullish CBD. I mean, volume is kind of low here, but uh, we can see it better on a TR chart. Yeah, we we see we see some shorts opening. We see some shorts opening. And price putting in higher lows here. Maybe this is it, Evan. Maybe this is uh, the beginning of the the bull market. Yeah, maybe it's the beginning of yeah of um or just the pump up to eighteen k. <laughs> Start with one move at a time. Um, yeah, we do. We, you know, we got some shorts opening up here above VWAP and below and below VWAP as well. So, so basically, I'm not. I, I, I haven't. I was gonna take. I've been procrastinating taking your course on the CB on the EXO charts thing for the longest time. But basically, what you want to do is when people are opening shorts, you want to go long, right? <laughs> uh, uh, no, not no, always. no, no, because because okay. okay. <laughs> only if only if you see um shorts getting uh, absorbed because if people okay. are just opening a lot of shorts, you might want to go short. But if you see a whole bunch of people opening shorts, but price keeps getting higher, that's where you would want to go long. Because because mm. it's a uh, it's a divergence basically. Like the market's uh, moved okay. by market longs and shorts. So if there's more market shorts than market longs, price should go down, right? But if price is yeah. going up like this, and you can see that the CBD there's more market shorts than market longs coming in, and you're like, dang, everyone's shorting, but price is going up. What the heck? Well, it's because there's mm. some whale absorbing those shorts. He's looking to push the price higher. Mm. It's just a confluence, bro. And the way you trade, you probably wouldn't. You you probably wouldn't even. That probably wouldn't help you at all, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's more for scalping. Yeah. Yeah, and like day trading and like ninja levels and stuff like that. And honestly, even with ninja levels, you don't really need it either. It's. It, it all it all depends, but it's definitely a good thing to to learn, bro. So you know, maybe maybe yeah, I could maybe I could hook you up with a juicy free course, man. Ooh, yeah. I, I would buy it though. I I would support you. I, I would buy it. <laughs> you support me, bro. Thank you, man. You, yeah, I really appreciate. Yeah, it. I really. Appreciate I would buy it. it. What is it? It's only ten grand, right? <laughs> it's only ten grand. Yeah. Yeah, only ten grand. It's a fair price, but um. Oh, there is one thing I wanted to. What's like? Do you have any? Um, this is a question probably everybody asks every day. Any top altcoin picks that you're DCing into? Are you? What are you yeah. doing with altcoins? Are you waiting uh, to get into altcoins? Any nah, views on altcoins? I'm in some alts, bro. So first Ooh. of all, have you ever heard of the milkshake theory? Because um, no, I have not. Dread Mining says, look up the dollar milkshake <coughs> theory. It predicted the DXY pump and predicts the end of the dollar as a world reserve. 
I'll have to look into that uh, dread mining. Shout out to dread mining, by the way. Oh, when when mining. is dread mining? When is the um? When does it think that the uh? What's the date for the end of the dollar as the world reserve currency? Or <laughs> if he if he happens to say that's another. He's a big fan. I see him in my chats all the time. Dread mining's in everyone's yeah, everyone's chat, man. That in Crypto Grizzly. He's never in his chat. I love Crypto Grizzly. Dread mining is the is the chain link of crypto YouTube channels. Ooh. Do you like chain link? Yes. I'm actually I'm a big hodler of chain link. I've been I've been accumulating yeah. chain link at the at these prices and will be under five dollars as well. Because um Yeah, I'm waiting for that kind of range. Like I think three nine to like one nine is my like range I'm really hoping we get to for link. Yeah. I like it because World Economic Forum is is bullish on it. <laughs> so, ooh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like featured on their website and everything. That's very interesting. I didn't know they even like mess with cryptos at all. They probably created crypto. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, they let's probably. Yeah. Oh man, what do you think of? Yeah, that's a question I have for you, Jason. What do you think of like dollar? Because obviously, there's a lot of people holding a lot of cash right now, and what do you, in earning you know three percent or the higher rates that we're not yeah. used to, you know, being able to earn. Even if you're in your twenties, you probably don't remember since you were a young kid, you know, being able to earn those amounts. Do you think like the dollar is gonna just crash? Like, do you think you know, and when could it end as the world reserve currency? It's it's hard to say, right? Because it it's, yeah. it's like it, it keeps getting shakier and shakier, right? I mean, you've got all these nations now looking to join BRICS. You got Saudi Arabia talking openly about not using the dollar to trade oil, and you know the petrodollar yeah. is the only reason why we can use the world reserve currency. And not only are our countries not using it to trade oil, but it seems like we're going into a future where oil is really, really bad, right? Shouldn't use it at all. So who knows what that yeah. is going to do thrown into the mix. And then meanwhile, we've just been devaluing and devaluing and devaluing the currency. And we've yeah. I mean, we've devalued it more in the past two years than ever, basically, with all the all the printing. I don't mm. know what's going to happen, man. But a lot of those dollars that were created in the past two years are offshores. Like they're not even in the United States, which means if countries say, you know what, screw the dollar, it's all coming back here. <laughs> oh. Which means we're going to be flooded with dollars out of nowhere. And um, there are people that invested in it, essentially. There are other countries that invested in it. Right. Other countries who are holding uh, the Like China and right. yeah. yeah. Yep. And yeah. China and, and, and some of the BRICS nations are working on a new currency that's actually backed by gold. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Like, I just don't know <clears throat> what's going on. I don't know how much of like world events, like behind closed doors, there's like um, like collaborations and agreements going on. Like, it's just impossible to know what's, what's legit and what's not, but... Yeah. Just on the surface, how much longer can the, can the dollar survive? Like, how much longer can it survive? It's based on nothing. The United States yeah. is in more debt than there exists money in the world to pay. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah. we just keep printing more and more and more of it. It's like, how long is it going to be until other countries are like, this is, you know, the United States dollar is a joke. So, yeah. You know what I'm a little bit bullish on? I want you to pull up peso, Mexican peso, U.S. dollar. You want that's an interesting chart. chart. You, you should put up. Yeah, I can, chart. yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, I don't even know, like, I'm not saying to invest in the, pay, the peso necessarily, but it's I, interesting. I like, if you look, I was, yeah, Mexico's awesome, man. I was in Mexico city. Um, Hang on. I've got a month ago. screen on. Oh, do you have it? Um, I believe I I'm sharing it. Yeah. You know, that song Mexico by uh, James Taylor, I think. Is that a country song? Um, I don't know. I, I think I, I, I've heard of it. I, I think I would probably recognize it, but it's a good song. I think it's a good song, man. I, I always play it when like uh when it's like a nice summer day and I and I'm trying to relax. <laughs> oh, okay. Have you been to Mexico? No, no, I've never been to Mexico. Oh, you gotta go. I've man. Been close, you gotta bro. go. It's awesome. I've been to San Antonio. <laughs> That's pretty close, yeah. It's close, man. <laughs> 
No, Mexico's awesome, man. I love Mexico. I've been to the um like near Cancun, not Cancun itself really, because that's part of America, but like the the um, east coast of it's awesome. Mexico City is incredible. Um brush up on your Spanish a little bit before you go to Mexico City. Um so you don't get uh gypped. Yo, yo hablo, yo hablo <laughs> yeah, so yo hablo how much poquito. Spanish do you know? You know a lot? Si, si, si. Si? Mucho? Mucho? Sabes mucho español? No, no. <laughs> No, okay. No. You are part Cuban, Pero, right? Sí, sí. Mi abuelo sí. es cubano. Repeat that, por favor. My, mi abuelo es cubano. Oh, oh, sí. I have sí, a real good abuelo. gringo accent. Hola, amigo. <laughs> yeah, you'll pick it up. I picked up a lot when I was in Costa Rica. Well, but you, you know looking what? at the tape... Go ahead. The, the Go problem ahead. with me is like... I've been spending a lot of time learning Hebrew and like I, I learned Spanish back in the day, like in high school and also just from being around my Cuban family. But now I like conflate the two in my head. So I speak a little yeah, it's... mix with Spanish. Like uh, I don't really know how to ask where the bathroom is in Spanish, but I know how to say a for habano, you know, a little Hebrew, <laughs> a little Spanish in there. Oh, okay. Donde, it's donde, donde esta. Let, you, let's but, just uh... have it. Doesn't think I'm part Cuban. Yeah, yeah man. 25% baby pure cubano My, right here I had a grandfather who he he passed away a while ago but who spoke he spoke Hebrew English German and French I believe I don't know about the French but he spoke it's crazy a lot of those Europeans cuz he lived in Europe, Europe a lot a lot of those Europeans speak freaking 3 to 5 languages it's crazy Yeah 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 us Americans like we're so <laughs> undereducated compared to her yeah, it's wild too because I was running into like you know people from Europe in Mexico City and they spoke better Spanish than I did and I'm like oh man because I lived in Miami I took it for so many years I'm like oh man this is so this is so um, frustrating but anyway do you have the do you have my chart up with the peso DC okay perfecto um so Mira Mira <laughs> I mean, look at the monthly on this. I mean, obviously, this just bleeds and bleeds and bleeds, but nothing's going to go in one direction, you know, forever, obviously. And the reason I think this has done well, and this is like outperformed the euro. This outperformed a lot of stuff for, I'm just curious on, so what, what you have here, I mean, the monthly coming into the green, that could, I mean, it could potentially bring you up quite a bit because I don't think Mexico is like, I, this, I'm going to sound very ignorant on this, but I don't think they're printing as many pesos as the U.S. is doing. And then also... The um, where is it? I think it's euro. Curious about the peso versus the euro. It did not have that drop down. That you know what I mean. It had a nice jump up against the euro, against all the other you know currencies that keep bleeding against it. And the reason why I think is because there's a lot of expats who are going to Mexico. There's a lot of expats yeah. that are going to Costa Rica as well. And when you have a lot of foreigners going to a place. You know, they're going there and they're buying the peso because they need to use it to buy things and go to restaurants and stuff. It's going to make it go up. And as you have more people going there, it should do well. Now, I don't know how to invest in the peso other than Forex trading. I know how to do that. But I mean, opening a Mexican bank account, that's probably the only other <laughs> only other kind of option there. Interesting, man. I, I um, That is really interesting. Just because um, I know this sounds weird, so I'm not going to say it because it has nothing to do with TA. But that okay. is very interesting, the peso against the uh, the euro. Even the Colone as well. Let me. Um, that's the Costa Rican currency. That had a nice jump. I don't know even really. Well, look at that. Wow. Like, what the what, what? What? The volatility on this is nuts. That is like crazy, this is. Man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what caused that, but there's a lot of people, like when you have more people going to a destination, bringing up the prices, the local currency what, should what come up. I mean, this is that? Is, what percent move is that? It's a lot. It's, well, not, a, I mean, 14%. That's for a crypto, lot. Nothing. Can you imagine yeah, you're for, like, you're an expat in Costa Rica with the dollar and all of a sudden you're 14% inflation. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. We're also, it could be because we're getting into the dry season, more people come too. I don't know if that would have to do with it. I was there during the wet season. It was just raining, but <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Man, I, I have a lot of friends from Costa Rica and uh, I want to get some land over <coughs> in Costa Rica just as like an investment. Oh man, I have a funny story. Oh yeah, I have a funny story about that. So I was, um, 
I was in Santa Teresa, Costa Rica, which is on the uh, west coast, the Pacific side. On are you familiar with it? Not too much, man. I'm I'm super super gringo, bro. Like okay, that's that's where all the gringo. That's where um Tom Brady owns like a mansion. That's oh. where Mel Gibson owns. I mean, that's like a big place where a lot of people go. Gotcha. And I was. It was kind of like discovered where people first started like buying land there in the, I believe it was the 1970s, 1980s. I was talking to a dude from Canada who spent 20 grand to buy land there when they didn't have, um, I think they didn't have electricity. It was either they didn't have electricity or running water, one of the two. Equally as terrible, obviously. He bought like some piece of land for 20 grand. Now it's worth like two or three million. I know that's, I, I feel like the opportunity might be gone, but that's, that's what my friends are saying. Like I, I, have, I have two friends who, who got some land over there and uh just as an investment like it's a good way to preserve your your purchasing power you know yeah I, mean, it, I would say that yeah it trends up with time you know especially you got to factor in property taxes all those other things i don't know what it's like in costa rica but my main view and it went up like 10x to that area in the last like 10 years i was talking to somebody who bought a piece of land there for like 60k 10, 15 years ago, just sold it for 600K. So, I mean, obviously it's probably not going to, like there's no way in hell you're getting another 10X in the next 10 years, but maybe you could get a 2X, you know what I mean? Something of that nature. Yeah, that's that's not bad still, but that's that's like investing in Bitcoin like now versus like, you know, in 2012 or whatever. Yeah, it's to that area. I mean... You, are you looking at any other things to invest in? Um, other than like, you know, it's mainly right now is just silver I'm big on. I have like a lot in silver. I'm looking for Bitcoin, ETH. If we come down more, I mean, I showed you kind of the DCA strategy that I'm going to do for that, you know, eight to 10 month period. Um, other than that, like I would stay pretty far away from the NASDAQ for a while. I think that's going to continue to underperform the S&P 500. Um, the other thing too that I think could be... Um, the Chinese ETFs, I think, will do well long term, but that could be not until like 2030 where those really the decade where those really take off. You know, it takes time for things to play out. But especially if that kind of becomes the next world power, like those will do very well. Yeah. Royal Fresh has invest in cattle, which is. Which oh, is yeah. Great. Crypto face. Do you have any do you own any commodities? Like, are you into commodities at all? No. No, I should be at, you know, I'm pretty much a crypto only guy and a precious metal guy. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, I, I was looking crypto faces talking about cattle. I was looking at the cattle chart. I think like if we go into a recession, um, cattle should go down. The only reason that may, you know, you know, the reason why, too. I'm sure you could guess that that may come up more is because if they put more like restrictions on like um, eating non-vegan stuff, it would theoretically bring the price higher and make it harder to get. Kind of like yeah. banning alcohol, it would go up. That's the main view there. I don't know if that necessarily. Go ahead. There's, there's a lot of other reasons why the price would go up. Um, like one of the, one of the reasons is because we are in such a serious drought that a lot of ranchers hey. have had to like slaughter their herds early because there wasn't enough pasture, there wasn't enough hay. I didn't know that. Yeah, and it like takes a few years before you can like rebuild your herd. Um. And plus, yeah. there's a whole bunch of weird. There's like a whole bunch of weird things going on right now, like with like a uh, like a big push away from agriculture in general. Um, like for example, like the World Health Organization is talking about how there's this big issue now with like um, this disease that sheep get, and so they're gonna try and eradicate the disease probably by like killing a whole bunch of sheep. And we just had the whole bird flu. It's basically like the uh, the chicken version of the coof and they've been killing oh. all these chickens and backyard chickens in case they had came in contact. And if a wild flock of geese flew over your backyard flock, actually some backyard flocks in the United States, they're getting, it's crazy, bro. So it's like, there's I didn't a, know about any of this. Wow. Yeah. Plus feed is so much more expensive now because of the droughts and because of um, fertilizer shortages, people can't grow as much. There's just so many things <laughs> compounding. Right now, that's kind of attacking the. Uh, is it all of the United States is in a drought, or is it just certain parts? I don't. I didn't even know about the drought. We're all in, we're in a big drought, man. I mean, even my own uh, well, I can't even pump water out of my well anymore with my hand pump. Like the electric pump goes a little uh, bit deeper, but my standing water level is down like twenty five feet. 
And that's what so, you use for probably everything, right? No, I mean, I, I still, wow. I, you know, I live like a modern lifestyle. I have an electric pump for running water. Oh, but, okay. You know, if I'm going to go pump it out by hand, I that I want to still be able to do that, you know? Oh, I, I thought you just pump everything by. I thought you, like, lived without houses and all, like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, but you know, could, is it possible that in the, if the drought is still stays gets worse, that your electric pump would would stop being able to pump? Uh, yeah, that's that is totally possible, bro. Wow, that's totally possible. Yeah, we'd have to drill down deeper or or drill another well. <coughs> so, yeah. So like, uh, E roll says that the uh, the bird flu is a big problem in the UK. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like in the UK, right? Aren't you like not even allowed to buy like uh, cage free chicken eggs right now or something? So. Oh wow. Because you could get sick from them? Or do you think it's blown know. out of proportion? Or? I don't know. But the craziest thing is, even though, a- according to the um, some organization, I don't know which one. I haven't looked into it in a while. But they say it's perfectly fine for like people to eat the chickens. Like There's no risk if you eat a chicken that's been in contact with the bird flu. But, uh, yeah. but yet right, they're killing them all anyway. Them. Do you think it's like some weird, I mean, it's hard to say, and I know if you don't want to go there on YouTube, but some like uh, <laughs> agenda. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course I think that, of course I think yeah. that bro, because like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's so hard to say what's real and what's not. One thing I do know is if you're going to, if you're going to consolidate agriculture and farming into these massive conglomerations of like um, Monsanto and Bayer, where they basically have the monopoly on agriculture mm. the, the conditions that people raise these animals in are very very inhumane and they're very very unhealthy so it wouldn't surprise me if there are these like crazy kind of diseases going around on these factory farms killing like swaths of animals and it could be a legitimate issue in big factory farms but when it comes to like people like me raising animals in where animals are supposed to be raised and not in like a dark cage eating gmo corn but out in the yeah. field eating bugs and, and real food, it's yeah, like your, your animals are going to be all right, you know, just like people, right? If you're eating McDonald's every day, drinking soda, you might die. But if you're living yeah. a healthy life, exercising, you'll probably be all right, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they, they they do those factory farms. They obviously do it to save money, right? That's the reason why, right? Yeah, they, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. All about, it's all about turning a profit and, and the whole yeah. idea that we have to feed the world, but – there's a whole bunch of issues with, I'm not, you know, we can't go down that path right now, but you know, it's my view that people should, should look to their food sources from local sources. doesn't mean you have to be a farmer or a homesteader, but it means support local farms, people in your region who, you know, like how they treat their animals, what they feed their animals, where you can talk to the people and not like buying it from who the heck knows where, you know? Because yeah, it's going to be a real issue. Yeah. The, the more the more the, uh, the agricultural industry consolidates into a big monopoly, the less control we're going to have over food. And uh, once um, the uh, the guy who created Microsoft owns all the all the patents on cows. Oh yeah, you know, they'll just he would just start. They would start banning it because they would say it's bad for you or whatever, or bad for the environment, yeah. all that type of stuff. It causes yeah. heart disease, which is bullshit. But it causes heart yeah. disease, bad for the environment, you know. Even though yeah. it's so crazy, because factory farming, of course, is bad for the environment. That's not what God created. But animals on land is good for the environment. It puts good things yeah. back into the soil, which produces good food to support people and animals. It's like a cycle, you know. But when you mess with that, of course, it's bad for the dang environment. But whatever, man. Dude, you would like Costa Rica. Oh my god! If you drive through like the the mountains in Costa Rica, it's just all these farms with cows. So I was driving through, and it was in the rainy you know, rainy season. It's just downpouring rain. I'm driving down this yeah down this hill, and I just see you know in front of me the cow. A cow is running away from his farmer, and the farmer's chasing the cow in the middle of the road, and in downpouring rain. That's awesome, bro. <laughs> And then another time I was driving, it was sunny. I was driving towards the beach in Costa Rica and in a rental a car I rented. And I just see a cow on the road and it's running. So I got to like, kind of dodge the cow. And then another cow, I see where the cow escaped from. They were jumping over this like fence. It wasn't high enough. And then the other cow had the idea. They were all escaping. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. That was the most incredible thing I saw in my entire life. You know, you're eating good food when you see stuff like that. You know what yeah. I mean? 
when I when I first came been smart. out to uh, our our homestead, uh, <clears throat> there, there's a farmer who his family basically used to own the entire mountain, and uh, when they knew we were moving in, he brought over one of his baby steers, and it, like the sun was going down, and yeah. we we're like out in the street, and all of a sudden, like we see like this animal walking, <laughs> and we didn't see like the owner, <laughs> we didn't see oh. like, Farmer John. That's literally his name. And we're saying, mm. what the heck? There's like a cow coming toward us. Like, we didn't know what to do. <laughs> do you have cows or, or do you, no. you have goats, right? You, nah, right now I only have chickens, but I'm trying to get, get my goat game on, bro. Cows are a lot of prey, a lot of work too, especially if you have bulls. Those are dangerous. Those will kill you probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit tougher. Stupid yeah. head says... Well, the problem is that people don't have enough time to go to farms to pick and choose what they need. Capitalism has enslaved us to eat that way. It's true. It's true. Like, I don't know how you feel about this, Evanaldo, but, you know, a lot of the problems that I I see that are happening right now in society are are because there's, like, people have to make a a tough choice between, like, convenience and comfort and, like, freedom and freedom is is tough. Like it takes a lot of work to be free. You know, it takes a lot of work. Mm. And um, we've become slaves. Yeah, we've become slaves to like corporate America. Like myself, all of us. Like it's just how society's gone. You know, like we yeah, don't, we don't know how to live the way people used to live a hundred years ago. I mean, yeah, a hundred. I mean, I used to live when I lived in um, South Florida, not not in Miami, like north of it, more where there was a lot of farmland. I was near a farm where I used to buy raw milk and like, you know, meat from and all that type of stuff. But even like where I'm living now, I could find raw milk, but I can't find a farm that actually has like it's tough. It depends where you live. And it's obviously more expensive, too. I mean, I don't really look at prices too much, but I know like the meat, the grass fed meat that I was getting from the local farm has got to be more than I would spend for it at the supermarket. Yeah, it's it is pricey. Yeah, that's the other thing too. It's it's more of a thing. That's what sucks for you know the middle class. I mean, it's hard to. I don't even like how much does it. I'm just curious. Like if if I wanted to buy a farm somewhere, you know, let's say a farm with where I could chickens, cows, enough where I could sustain it for myself and just live off all the food where I could get meat. For eggs, your own personal self. Yeah, my personal self, and then maybe sell a little bit as well. How much would that cost me? You know what I mean? If I wanted to buy land with all that already. Pretty cheap, honestly, bro. Like if if you're just looking to sustain yourself, I mean, you could do a lot on like an acre or two or three. Oh, okay. Um, So that wouldn't be that much, especially, well, I would be looking to, if you wanted to like buy it where it's already, buy it from somebody where it's already set up with the cows and like everything's kind of set up, you know what I mean? Yeah, that I don't know. There, there was a farm for sale yeah. like down the road for me, and it was going for like five million, I think. Oh wow! How many acres was it? Oh, it was, it was like, I think it was like thirty something, maybe forty something acres, and it had like multiple houses on it and barns and all that. Oh, okay, that would make sense. So you could obviously get you know something for five acres for maybe a million or something. So that's it's not yeah, probably less. To be honest with yeah. you, bro. I mean, okay. Yeah, probably probably less. I, but it's it's a, you know. It all depends on like how resourceful you want to be and stuff as well. Is it better, like based on your knowledge, to have a farm in a colder climate or a warmer climate? Like, would it be better to have a farm in like Texas or Florida, or should you be up north? Is there a difference? <laughs> I can only. <laughs> it's hard for me to say because I've never lived down south, but I envy. Yeah. People have a, a much larger growing season. And like, I, I wish I lived in Florida for the growing season. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have hurricanes, but, uh, you know, I can't really grow anything from like November until like April is like dead time for me. So, you know, you live in Central America, South America, you can grow all year round. That's what I, I yeah, I would think that's the benefit. That's why I would think it would be a little bit better. Yeah, that's why I was curious about, yeah. It is interesting to kind of, you know, learn about and be kind of more self-sufficient off the grid too. You know, you got the solar panels. I just bought a water distiller. Just bought a water distiller. Nice, man. Yeah, to you know, because tap water, man, tap water is supposed to be bad for you. So I've been using the water distiller. Nice. I. Uh, it's pretty cool. 
is it's a lot it, of work. Does it taste different, the water? Um, you know, it's like, yeah, it does taste like a little flat. You could tell it does taste a little bit different. It's crazy when I like clean out the thing, the uh, device, there's like all dirt and smudge and like it, it does, it looks pretty disgusting. The stuff it takes out of the tap water. Um, yeah. I, I add electrolytes. Go ahead. So I don't trust tap water. No, no, there's like SSRIs, birth control, estrogen. Yeah. There's a lot of. <laughs> Yeah. Bro, did you see yeah. that? There's like a public service announcement, announcement that uh, the mayor of New York City made. Did you see that? Uh, n I think I vaguely say what it was and I might. It was like a public service announcement to make sure you drink some of that New York City tap water. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. He's like, <laughs> I, I've never heard of that. Like to remind people to drink tap water. He didn't, he, he didn't say drink. Make sure you make sure you stay hydrated. He's like, it's hot outside. Make sure you drink a nice big glass of that New York City tap water. That's <laughs> funny. Crazy. I don't know. I wonder what the um, – the like I used to drink mainly um, Mountain Valley spring water. I'm not paid to say that, but that, that was the one that um, is supposed to be like really good spring water. But it was like now it's – because that gets expensive. Like you could have it where they deliver it to you. It's in glass <laughs> bottles like every week. But I was looking to do – I do distilled water, and people are going to say it doesn't have, like, the um, magnesium and the minerals that regular water has. I add electrolytes to it, so that's what I've been doing lately, and that's it, that's that's probably the best way I could see, like, distilled water or reverse osmosis and then add some electrolytes to it. If you have, like, those um, electrolytes that I bought on, like, Amazon, it's a little – it's easy. It's just little drips of um, – it's drips of a solution you put in. It kind of tastes like Gatorade a little bit. Nice, man. I, I've, yeah. I've been doing the well water, so I don't, I don't, I don't worry. That's about better. It, you know? yeah, that's that's like spring water. That's probably the ideally the best. The only thing I have to worry about is Roundup from all the farms around me. So, what's that a little Roundup going to hurt anyway? You know, a little Roundup. I take that a shot stuff every morning. Terrible. Yeah, that that stuff will give you freaking cancer, right? That's that's the yeah. That guy won all that money, sued for all that money, right? Yeah. Yeah, Hexflex doesn't drink water um, because <laughs> fish. Um, uh, fish uh, have uh, marital relations in it, and he says water is for plebs. What's a pleb? I don't even. I've heard that word. What the hell is a pleb? Pleb. I think it's like a like a common a common person. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I drink coconut water too. Coconut water is supposed to be healthy, mainly that. Um, and then this distilled lately. That's the thing I've been experimenting with. It's a lot of work with the stupid distiller, though. You got to fill up the thing. Clean it out, you know. Maybe it, it's a little loud too. It's got a big fan on it, and it it, it, it takes a while. It takes four hours to get like a gallon out of it. I oh, think. But yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you move when you move to Costa Rica, bro, just drill well. Don't worry about distilling and all that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Costa Rica is interesting because you can drink the tap water in Costa Rica, unlike most, um, unlike every other country in Central and South America. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit more developed in that aspect. Nice, man. Not that you should, but. <laughs> so Royal Fresh also loves coconut water. I used to drink coconut water a lot, I guess, back in the day. When I, I was I was a little bit more of a yuppie, you know. I, I went through a yuppie phase. And I was like in my early 20s. I decided yeah. you know, it's time to like clean up my act. Put a little hairspray in my hair, you know. Uh, got some nice clothes. Some nice Ooh. shoes. That was short-lived, bro. You know, I was trying to go against my personality. You know, um, I got to ask you, uh, how, how's the gym been going? How's your workout routine going? I'll be honest with you, man. I've been in such a rut when it comes to working out. Like, um, I'm just, I'm tired, man. I've been tired. Like I, I'm, I'm weak. I'm tired. I, uh, really? yeah, man. And I like keep getting these like little injuries, like, uh, like pull a neck muscle, like tweak my shoulder, like tweak my back. So I've just been Jeez. like, you know, I haven't really been lifting heavy. I'll be honest with you, man. I've been doing just a lot of like body weight push ups, pull ups, and like going for walks. Really, that's that's about it. Like lightweight squats, and that's that's about it, man. I I don't know. <coughs> it, it happens to me a lot, like around this time of year, where like my body naturally like goes into like winter mode. That kind of yeah, I, I was because I was up north like for Thanksgiving, and I, yeah, my body definitely less energy. Um, I started a new workout routine. I'm trying to do a German volume training now just because like lightweight, it's harder to get injured. And it's like um, one routine I've been doing is for chest and back. You just do um, 10 sets of 10 with, um, you know, bench press or dumbbell bench press supersetted with 10 sets of 10 of 
bent over dumbbell row. I just do it with dumbbells. And then I feel like dumbbells you get less injured with because it's less muscle imbalances kind of. So I've been doing a lot more stuff with dumbbells. Nice. Um, you get crazy pumps from like German 10 sets of 10 with stuff. Like you get good pumps. Like I feel like for volume and size, it's a pretty good um, technique. It kind of like it's starting a new routine kind of gets you like more motivated. Um, so, yeah. And I started taking, you know, I take creatine. I take tongue cat Ali. Those are the, main, the only two things I really take. But, yeah, I've heard of that tongue cat, whatever. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't know if it's placebo, but it's it, it definitely like has. Run, right? Yeah, I don't know if it's placebo, but it's definitely given me a pump. I mean, but the thing is, like, so much of this stuff is just placebo, really. Like, if you tell somebody, you give somebody a sugar pill, tell them it's going to give you more testosterone energy. You know, it, it's all mental at the end. A lot of it's so mental. Unless you're on, like, actual anabolic steroids, nothing's going to be, like, that significant. You know what I mean? Yeah, but when I, when I took steroids, whenever I do take steroids, I get the craziest pumps and the craziest gains, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like when you're just injecting HGH, like in between sets. I used to do yeah. that back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little HGH here and there and some a little trend here and there, some TRT. Yeah, like Liver King. Like, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, what like came out. You know, that, I, you know, it's just it's all about the nine ancestral tenants, bro. That's what it is. <laughs> Did you see what, what, app, what came out? Like, it came out yeah, that yeah. you spent a ten. <laughs> And you're in a month on. So I didn't even know you could. Like I would think that's like freaking like, but like Mr. Olympia, like type type of numbers. You would spend that much on steroids. I didn't know it cost that much. Yeah, it's it's strange, bro. Like, what's so weird to me about Liver King is like, how the heck? Like, why why is it a big deal? I guess like everyone knew he was lying. So what's the difference now? Like, was did yeah. some people think there was a chance he was being honest? I mean, if the guy was like five foot one, it's probably possible. You know what I mean? But he's not. You know, that, that's the only way it's possible to have a physique like that. If you're, you got, you have to be really, really short. It's weird. Yeah. Dreadmine says, why eat organic and watch out for your diet and then take roids? Yeah. It's so weird. I don't get, I don't get the whole, I don't get the whole lying about being natural thing. It was all to make money selling his supplements. You know, yeah. he wouldn't he, he wouldn't have had a big enough following. You have to be really big to get the following. It was all planned to make. He made over a hundred million dollars um, per year, and probably he, go ahead. He made a hundred million dollars a year for multiple years. That's insane. I didn't realize he made that much either. I didn't even know you could make that much. Like, I, you know what I mean? I would have guessed he made like ten mil a year selling supplements. I would not have thought a hundred mil. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. So uh name scene says he's injecting some trend right now. Um <laughs> it, Yeah, it, it, it's crazy stuff. Well, this, yeah. this It just surprises me. It's like Ah, oh, man, I just don't I don't First of all, I don't understand why people keep it a secret. And I also don't understand why people lie about it. Like even if it's for the money, I guess because he's selling like a lifestyle of like the nine ancestral tenants of eating testicles and like running through the wild <laughs> wilderness. You do eat testicles? You know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the way you the way I asked it sounded like so. That, that do I, I eat <laughs> testicles? Do I eat testicles, man? It's a good thing there's only 200, 300 people in here because guys, make sure to like the video if you want to know if Jason Casper eats testicles. <laughs> um, shout out to Lynn Hughes. Popular in Colorado, I think they have it at restaurants there. The um, we're we're gonna look at Lane Hughes's uh his chart in a second, but uh, I have never eaten testicles. All right, me but neither. I've thought about it. I've thought about it eating chicken testicles. Yes, Michael. I've Hearn, eaten, Michael Hearn. Yeah, that's the guy I was thinking. Yeah, about. I've eaten liver, like all other organs, but not testicles. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but. You know, I, I go to a, I go to a nutritionist who believes that whatever <coughs> is, is weak in your body, you should eat that thing from like an animal. So like if you have thyroid yeah. problems, you should eat thyroid tissue. If you have liver problems, you should eat liver. Heart problems, you should eat heart tissue. Um, and so I think I never asked her about like test eating testicles and like boosting your testosterone. But uh, what, what about like? What what if you have like back problems and you, what what should you eat then? Like, I guess you should eat some some back, eat some back, yeah, eat some. That's just muscle. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, my ne- my neck is always sore. What should I eat for this? <laughs> eat some some chicken neck bone broth. Oh, uh, is that a thing, really? Yeah, bro. I make it all the time when I when I, uh, <coughs> you know. Interesting. When I when I slaughter my chickens. All right. So Lane Hughes, Lane Hughes posted this very interesting chart, the USDT dominance chart, yeah. and he uh he noticed something here. Let, let me let me actually let me see if I can pull it up here. Yeah, pull it up. I just stopped sharing my. I see it. Yeah, let's see here. The PIM indicator. The PIM indicator. Let's now, Lane Hughes is jacked. He's jacked. Yeah, here, hang on. I'm gonna pull up yeah. the Twitter here. All right. So he has this chart here. He says huge similarities in the start of the September 2020 bull run for Bitcoin and where we are right now in the USDT dominance chart. One. Both have massive bearish divergence. That's the first lead up to the bull run. And two, money flow divergence to the price action. We're about to cross into the red just like September 2020. So this is the chart that he has here. And so this was right before the last bull run. There was a a very large bearish divergence on the USDT dominance chart with money flow and momentum waves. And right now, we also have a bearish div, which is basically hinting at the fact that people are detethering and... I know I am, you know. So this is going to sound really bearish, but you know, if we don't go into a bull run, you know the other possibility. Yeah, <laughs> tether blows up. That That's, could be the other. I I I I, I, yeah, I heard I from a source. I, I heard from I don't know if it's true, but I heard from I, I know a guy who knows a guy, and uh-huh. I heard that something could not like don't don't go ahead and like start screaming this to everybody, but. What I'll say is, I heard it's possible. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen pretty soon. The tether blow up. That could be yeah. the last black swan that we need, bro. To like get yeah. into. Uh... Where do you think price would go for Bitcoin if tether completely blows up? I think we could get a wick down to three k, man. It's pot, yeah. I think we could get that wick down to three k and fill all my limit orders, so that we can we can ride the. <laughs> Yeah, that would be wild. That would be like the biggest. I don't know if it would go down that low, honestly. I, I think there's a, even if Tether blows up, I think there's a decent shot that it just goes down to like 9K. You know what I mean? Because I don't think that would, would that really, like everybody's going to be trying to sell their Tether. They're probably going to be trying to trade their Tether into Bitcoin if that happens. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I hold I a like lot of, I do that. hold a lot of Tether, actually. Like, uh, I don't. <laughs> what do you hold? USDC? Um, I'm in no stables. Like, right. I had a little bit of Gemini dollar earning interest. I got it off of there, like just in time before Genesis, like paused, um, pause withdrawals. But no, I don't, I don't mess with any stable coins in this environment. Um, other than the trading stuff for trading on like five bit, but yeah. No date, no donating to gossip or entertainment for me says uh, the euro dollars back green on the monthly chart and Bitcoin follows it. That's interesting. That is interesting. I think that's a bunch of nonsense, <laughs> but I don't think that means too much. But yeah, um, that's true. So Earl says they always say USDT is gonna is gonna collapse. Well, the last bear market we had, USDT wasn't as much of there. There wasn't as much as many people in USDT because no one was no one was leverage trading really. Like, yeah, leverage trading just kind of started right for Bitcoin. I remember it was a big deal when like Binance started futures. And yeah. like, now people can short Bitcoin. This is horrible. I remember that. Like, that's what all like the YouTubers were saying back in like 2017. Yeah. Around like the top, I'm pretty sure. And people are like, well, it's because now people can short. So now that they can short, Bitcoin's going to zero. That's the thing. The thing too with like Tether is you got to think about it this way. Like all the influencers kind of they I'm not saying they cause like the, you know, things to go down like Celsius or Voyager or that by like, but when you have a lot of people, like remember what happened with Celsius, everybody was posting on Twitter weeks before they paused withdrawals, get your stuff off of Celsius. A lot of people were, Mm -hmm. and there was that period where a lot of people got their stuff off of there. Not saying Celsius wouldn't be bankrupt now, but that is the catalyst sometimes. And if everybody starts doing that with Tether, which is starting to happen a little bit, Mm -hmm. I think you could actually you could at least have a bad to peg, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's very interesting. That is very interesting. 
that could be the next thing. Like I would be very careful in this environment with Tether. I just use it just for trading pretty much. I would be careful. I mean, it's kind of even USDC, like the regulation too with the US government, with the government, that could kind of mess with those a little bit Um, because they want their own Fed coin to kind of come. So that's what the... That could be the issue there, which kind of concerns me, but yeah. Yeah, me, me too. And, and I don't, like, I see a lot of the pieces of the puzzle of, like, the, the progression toward, like, Fed coin and all that. Like, it's just so weird. Like, the whole FTX thing happened, and then, like, a week later, the Fed, like, launches their 12-week pilot for their for their Fed coin. And, like, yep. pretty much every country right now is announcing, like, their digital coin. And, um... Yeah. I There's... There, Something smells a little fishy, bro. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. Just, it just smells a little fishy. Yeah, and then SBF is doing interviews now. I mean, what do you yeah. think? What's your what – What's your? is he going to go to prison ever? I no. don't know. Of what course do you, he's not. Probably, I think if he does, it's going to be a short not. period of time. Yeah. Maybe a year. Fine. He'll be yeah. fine, bro. He's he's straight up World Economic Forum. You know, his yeah. name works for World Economic Forum. He's like, uh, what, so under <coughs> Soros, like the second or third largest donator to like the Democratic Biden. Party and, and, yep. and also allegedly now the Republican Party. Oh, so he switched he, over. He's paid his dues. I, I, think he, I think he just supported both. I think he's just paying his dues, man. <laughs> I think. Oh, it's genius. I think he's just yeah. paying his dues because like. Um, yeah. Yeah, because just the way everything happened. It smells. I, I didn't. I was not on FTX, but me, in me hindsight, neither. like, it's just crazy that like the bank man, the bank man, right, <laughs> had like this exchange and had like the mainstream media talking about him as being like the next Warren Buffet. Yeah, and um, Forbes magazine putting him on the cover and all this. And um, it just seems like he was propped up there for a specific purpose. Did you see some of the like leaked text messages? I don't know if they're real, but did you see some of like the leaked text messages of SPF and like other people? They're pretty funny. Like, are you talking about where he was like private messaging a journalist about like how he just had to like say the right thing or whatever? Exactly. Yeah, that one. It's like you have to be woke to like support, get gain support of the people in, in the Western world. Yeah, it's hard to say if that's real or not because, like, it, it's it probably is. I mean, I'm sure if he didn't actually write that, it's what he was thinking. <laughs> right, right. Why yeah. would he, Why would he message that to a journalist? So it's a weird thing. Yeah, that's that's the other thing too. I, the the CZ one could have been fake, where the CZ is like your balance. What he's like, what the hell? Your balance sheet is absurd. Oh my, holy f! What the f? <laughs> that was weird too, right? But that that's what you would expect, like him to say. Seeing that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but. It's just weird certain things that happened on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, who knows? But that's yeah, that's what you would know. expect the reaction would be. Um, yeah, who knows? It, it's bad, though, because you have just Binance and Coinbase are the big two. I mean, if anybody else goes down, it's going to get more too much of a monopoly. I mean, Kraken's the next one. People are afraid of crypto.com. I like the CEO. He's like, we're going to prove everybody wrong. We're not pausing no withdrawals. We're all good. And he was right so far. So... Um... Yeah, I guess that's true. He's, it's impressed me. I took my stuff off of crypto.com a while ago, be you know, out of fear of it, but you know, that's still stayed around. So that's that's the only really one for like yield earning them and Kraken, I believe. I mean, there's probably a few others that are still afloat. Nexo is looking really sketchy. They're giving like 10% interest on everything. You could tell they're having issues. I don't think we could even use that one in the US, but yeah. I don't is know. Is anything happening with Bitcoin? We we do have some some pretty bullish CVD forming here on the on the fifteen minute time frame. We've got some pretty bullish CVD going on here. It's just nothing's happening. It's just too yeah. We've been this entire stream just sideways, literally nothing. Yeah, but um, we have a bullish div. It looks like on the two hour on market cipher. Yeah, we have bullish divs on the one hour. We we've, we've got bullish divs now. Uh, is it official on the two hour? Is it two hours? Yeah, it's printing. It did not confirm yet. It confirms in 37 oh, wow. minutes. Oh, yeah. See, look at that, man. So, you know, I'm in a tiny little long right here. I'm in a tiny long. It's a small one. 26,000 contracts. Let's see if we can get a nice pump here. We might, man. What do you think? You think we could? Yeah. I mean, like, I had, I had a pretty 
the copy <coughs> entry because I, I longed 16, I longed 16, 852. So I had to put my stop loss underneath 16, 730. <laughs> so like it was a tiny position to main, you know, good respect. Yeah. That. But, uh, but Hey, let's see if we get a nice weekend pump. Maybe I could come back with a, a decent profit. Over the You're only using a hundred X leverage here. This is, you know, this is novice. Um, is I'm that the max? X leverage. The, okay. So the reason why this, this, I, I keep very, very little money. I, I, I took most of everything off my exchanges, bro. <laughs> With all I did too. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I only have that on uh, so high because I was looking for longs and I was already in the short. So I just there's no reason not to use 100x leverage just to give me more margin. Yeah, it is rough with everybody taking everything off of exchanges, but it kind of shows how resilient kind of yeah. The like crypto case is saying the Chinese companies, none of them really went down. <laughs> none mm -hmm. of them. Which is kind of indicative of what we'll see as China, you know, come, probably becomes the next world power. But yeah, yeah. Who knows? Like someone in the chat was saying, like China's like screwing themselves over by like their policies and stuff. So who knows what the heck it's going to? Oh, be. do you know what? Like with the the lockdowns, do you know what the kind of the agenda behind it? I believe is. What? I don't know if you you might have heard about this. Um, because I know they're it's... like. Sorry, go. It's to prevent a like similar to 08 what happened in the US because I think a lot of people are behind like on their mortgages and stuff. And if you have a lockdown, you could kind of, I, I, I could be completely wrong on this, but you could kind of prevent people from having to pay their mortgages and stuff and keep their housing market high. That because of what like Evergreen, what was that one that that big housing one that went, um, that went bankrupt? It's kind of that's kind of why they're doing those lockdowns. That's part of the reason. Interesting, bro. That's super interesting. That's the only logical thing. I mean, there's no way in hell they they, they eradicated COVID. It was all in two weeks. In, Allegedly, in April, yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, all yeah. done. Yeah, Wuhan was Zero having cases, like, yeah. wild rave parties while the United yeah. States was in lockdown. Yeah, because they they do not like seriously. They they do not care. Like even if COVID was bad there, they, yeah, they, they wouldn't care. care. They <laughs> what the heck? bro? We live in a crazy, crazy yeah. world, man. Yeah. That's just why you can't even go to China either. Like Americans cannot go. That's one of the only countries, even if you're fully vaxxed, you can't go to China. Really? Yeah. Really? Um, yeah, you can't. And I think the reason is like um, because they can't come here, I believe. I don't know if that's still true, though. Um, that's normally that's why you used to have to get a visa to go to China because we made them get a visa. So that's why that's kind of how they did it. Um, but now you can't go like and I don't know, like. In terms of public opinion, like the views of Americans to the Chinese and the Chinese to Americans is like the most negative. Like no, we are very at at ends with them overall. Um, like just public opinion, kind of. Really, like just your your typical person, they think like Americans are what? Like yeah, they would say the government. Yeah, that mm -hmm. and like the government's corrupt, you know. But they, we would think their government's corrupt. They would think our government's corrupt, and try. They were thinking basically, we think they're trying to screw us over, and vice versa, kind of. Yeah. Well, it is interesting because yeah. according to uh, Klaus Schwab, you know, China is the model that uh, the West should be looking towards. So. Yeah. So I it, it's it, it's like it's the you know it, it's like a capitalistic government with like way with like a st very strict parent like everything's regulated yeah. you can't even like they regulate how much video games kids play too i think like all that you can't even do it for certain amounts of time really yeah they regulate i don't know how it works but i know it's definitely you could probably get away with it like if you know how to use a vpn i think you could get past most of their stuff but i believe you can't even use instagram like there's a lot of stuff that you really? can't even get on interesting bro uh, even t did you know TikTok is banned in India? No, I didn't know that. So, Erol says yeah. they are not allowed to leave China, and they also have stopped issuing passports. Interesting. Um, Y'all, they can't leave. Yeah, that's what's. Yeah, that's what could get a little hazy if that happens here. I don't think it will, but that's possibly if you get into like tough tensions and stuff, and a possible world war breaking out. I think that's probably what most countries would start to do. Um. They would want to keep you here. So you're Xflex says you can go to China with a visa for a visit. Uh, you sure about it? on kayak? It's there's like a big map on kayak that has like it shows you all the places you can go. Um, and you can't go I, to China. 
Yeah, China's like the big, it says all red, like a merit, unless they just changed it recently. More more places have been opening up, but I believe you, I could be wrong, but I believe unless that site is wrong, Kayak is wrong if it's saying that you can't then. Um, but yeah, I mean, could they come here? I don't even, are they a lot? I, that's what, not, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I'm not up to date on my China travel policies, nor am I up to yeah. date on my U.S. travel policies because I don't travel, so... I'm not yeah. going to leave the farm. You know, I don't leave the farm. Yeah, it's, it's good, man. <laughs> we got a lot of people shorting here, but price is not going down, you know? This is just boring. Like, I, I don't see anything significant. Just this is, I mean. Well, bro, you know what? <clears throat> I'm about to play games uh, in my Discord, and what we do is we do a challenge, and the winner of the challenge wins a, a 500 bucks, and then they have to t say – Take the five hundred bucks and say long or short right now, hundred x leverage, and then in oh, five minutes God. they keep the PNL, whatever it is. So this is could they wait? Could they wait to enter, or they have to enter no, right? No, it then? has to be right then. Oh, has anyone won it? Or yeah, yeah, people. I mean, okay, well. I mean, you're you're, guaran you right you're guaranteed to win five hundred bucks, but if if you make a profit on the hundred x long, then you get more. What would you do right now if you 100x leverage? For, oh, um... man. 100x leverage, <laughs> long or short? 50,000 contracts? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's see something. Should I do it now and see what happens? What do you think, Evan? Let's, let's, let's actually do one. Oh. Uh... Well, let me look at the lower time frames. That would probably be what you want to look at here. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna mark it in right now. Uh, how, what is uh, five hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin? Is is what like? Um, is that like five hundred two bitcoins? No, two point five bitcoins. Wow, uh, three bitcoins. Uh, yeah, five hundred on a hundred. It's fifty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So that would be. That'd be like two something, yeah, three Bitcoins. That's crazy. Three Bitcoins. That is crazy. Wow. All right. Well, here, let's give it a shot, guys. Let's give it a shot right wrong? now. I'm going to put on over another Bybit account. All right. Let's actually, let's take a vote in the chat. Let's take a vote in uh, the chat. Okay. This is an intimate I don't, group. This is an intimate I'm looking group. at my chart. I don't know. I don't know what I would do right now. All right. I, I'd probably go long. You would go long? Me well, let's see. Where would your liquidation point be if you went long? Yeah, I'd probably go long because your liquidation point would be below your all right. last. It's all right, Evan Aldo says long. All right, I'm gonna go long. I don't know though. No, I'm going <laughs> long, bro. Three. Are you points. actually? Yeah, hundred X. Okay, now, Evan Aldo, bro, I am going to pee. All right, so you watch the chart for me, bro. Let me know if I'm going to get yeah. liquidated. You have the keys to the castle, okay? I'll be back, you and it? I hope I'm in profit. Yep, it's on the screen right now. So so I hope I don't uh, get okay. wrecked, bro. It's your fault, okay? I see it, yeah. yeah yep. I'm watching, all right. okay. All right. Okay. I'll be right back. Um, Hang on. All right, all right. All right, guys. Um, my name is Evan Aldo, um, and the reason, the reason why, I think, I don't know if I could yeah, um, share my screen at the moment, but... The reason I think you'd probably want to go long is because you've got a swing low at 16.803. And, you know, that would be kind of your liquidation point slightly below there. So, and based on how your lower time frames look, like the uh, 30 second, uh, 15 cent, I don't know, that doesn't, um, <laughs> but, you know, 10 minute green dot. It's a little tough right now. It's a little tough right now. I, I, you might be waiting a little bit actually to see because we were just so slow. You might be waiting a little bit for an outcome. I mean, 1% liquidation price. <coughs> excuse me. If the liquidation price is below like, yeah, if it's below the swing low at, you know, 16801, you probably should be okay. Um, hard to say though. Let's try a local FIB level on my chart here. Um, Yeah, don't know. Tough. Uh, uh, yeah, we're coming up a little bit. Let's see how his trade. Let me see. I'm watching the trade. Um. Oh wow, it's just at zero. Nothing is happening. Wow. 
Just nothing going on here. 300 people watching. Let me look at the live chat a little bit. Um, P is a long stream liquidated. Um, price looks frozen in time. It's long. Um, break even. Where are the fees on this? Um, hmm. You're still peeing? Jeez. Um, uh, let's see. No, the, the, it should be in the green now. It definitely should be in the green. We're coming up. All yeah, right, Evan, I'm back, years. man. Yeah, it's in the green. It's in the green, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's in the green. It's doing good. Cool, man. Thank you, You're... bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was that I mean... was a, that was a long, scary pee. So people are asking about the fees. So the fees on that market order is thirty bucks. All right, thirty bucks. That means I have to make anything I make more than thirty bucks is profit. Then we also have to take into account the fee of closing the trade. So even if it's a limit order, it'll have some fees, right? So liquidation I'd... price is sixteen eight fifty six. So I have some I have some wiggle room here. You know, I might just keep this baby open. You know, who knows? Who knows? Hundred X trade. What? Last time I did this, I made a good profit actually. Where would you take profits on this? Like where any point you're looking at or I would probably take profits about I would I would I would shoot for these highs up here, maybe seventeen oh four five. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's yeah a visual. Let's do yeah, that. Let's it, do that. yeah. I mean, you could if you want to be more conservative, go at like eh, sixteen nine seven seven. You know those swing high, those little highs there. But it looks like you should be okay on this trade. Um, I think you'll be all right. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see, baby. We pumping, baby. Here, let's see. I get all the profits. Jason, if you make a fifty grand off this trade, I go all those profits, right? No, well, I'm, I'm definitely not gonna make fifty grand if I hundred percent TP up there. Um, you know, how much would you make? I'm trying to think. What's the here? Let's let's um let's let's edit it. Let's not fully TP. Let's TP half there, right? Let's shoot for the yeah. That would be yeah. Let's TP half right there. You know, yeah, because that's only point three. That's not that much money. It's probably like yeah. I would uh, I would yeah. I would shoot up for that golden pocket as well. <clears throat> you know, yeah. To, to make a significant amount, I mean, what, if you got to move up like one percent to, oh, uh, you got to come up to freaking like seventeen one to make a significant amount here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty grand isn't that much for. You got to do a ten million dollar trade. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, I see the golden pocket. That's at six. Yeah, around seventeen k. Yeah. I think it'll probably get there. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Post only would decrease the fee. That's true. That's true. Post only would potentially decrease the fee. Come on, baby. It would be a limit, Come yeah. on, Bitcoin. Let's pump. All right. Hang on, Evan. You know what I'm going to do, man? I'm going to play some Rock music. music. I can't anymore because of copyright strike. I'm, I'm taking my ah. channel seriously now, but I have a pump song that uh, you'll be able to hear it if you listen to the stream. It, it, it's hype, bro. It's real hype. It's like called Metal Step, Dubstep and Metal Mixed. Let me know if you mm. can hear it. Do you hear it? No. Okay. You'd probably have to play it aloud on your thing so you can hear it through your microphone or whatever. Or I could get it on the screen. Oh, uh, you, you got your... Are you muted? I can hear it. You hear it? Yeah, I hear it now. Yeah. I got it on the stream. I'm watching the stream. Pretty good song. What kind of music for kids listen to? Oh, price is coming up. It's working.
That 30 second time frame looks good, man. Pump it on the 30 second time frame, baby. 30 second, I like the 30 second. I could have 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds not too bad. 10 seconds is a little bit. Do you ever look at those? Sometimes. The one minute looks good. One minute looks good. Um, yeah, pump it. Let's see, how much is your trade ahead right now? It's ahead 45 bucks. Yeah, it's good, man. Good. Wow, it's 10 a game for the original. Is, is 100x leverage the limit, or can you go higher? Yeah, it's the limit. On Bybit, I think on Bitget you can go a little bit higher, I believe, right? Yeah. I see you dancing. Let's pump it, baby. Let's pump this Bitcoin price, baby. Come on. Evan Aldo in the house, baby. Let's go. Are we going to dump or are we going to pump? Robert Bonar is the boy. That was right. He's Peace, awesome. man. He's All right. Everybody in the chat, when this breakdown kicks in, circle pit, circle pit. That's the only way we're going to pump this price up. All right. Evan Aldo, man. You gonna circle pit with us? What is this? I don't even know what that means. Okay, <laughs> he's not metal enough. Oh, I know what that is. Is that where you wave your yeah. head around? That's it, uh -oh. man. We're gonna dump! No, we're gonna pop! We're gonna dump! No, we're gonna pop! We're gonna dump! Uh -oh. No, we're gonna pop! We're gonna pop! Let's go! Yeah! It's not working. Ah, uh, man. Crap. Yeah, we're getting that one minute red dot. Ah, uh, one minute red dot. Ah, oh, man. It's a boring market. Oh, man. I don't know. You still look at the uh, like liquidation points? Uh, no, I, I actually don't do that, no. I gotta check that out. A lot of liquidation points around 18k, and I think there are. Somebody told me there are. Really, I believe that would probably increase, like based on your understanding and knowledge, that'd probably increase the odds of us coming to 18k, right? Um, yeah, probably because they need liquidity, you know, they need it, would get get a lot of liquidity. Here, guys, I'm gonna post it, I'm gonna post a song in the chat because everyone asks about it. Here it is, guys, in the chat right now. It's called We're Gonna Dump, No, We're Gonna Pump What. Is that really what it's called? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, wow. Um, Those are the words that I sing to the course. I have to fix my streaming software because I used to be able to like rap to beats uh, during my live streams. But you know what happened? It's like delayed. So I hear in my head, <laughs> right. But then when I listen back to it, I'm like half a beat off. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You got to probably play it aloud. That's on your speakers. And then. I used to be able to do it though. Like that's the thing. Like I've done like, you know, live freestyles on the spot. So I don't know. I think maybe my computer's slow. I don't, I'm not sure. So uh, I got I just got um this is breaking news right now. Liver King just um posted an apology video for taking steroids. Oh man, I can't wait to watch that later, bro. Yeah. I wonder if this is all a business uh endeavor on his end, you know? Oh, uh, like purposely admitting to it or purposely yeah. leaking. Yeah. Um honestly probably not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely possible, but I don't know. I feel like because he claimed so hard for so long that he was natural, and then to just, you know, do that for more attention, I don't think so. Hey, who knows, man? Well, we'll have to see how that comes out, you know. I wonder if he'll go back to only the nine ancestral tenets of health, testicles, what blood. Is non non ancestral tenets? The nine. <laughs> The nine ancestors. Nine. Oh, okay. Nine. Because you know our ancestors, bro, they were just like working, lifting weights all day. You know, just working out all day. Because you know, back in the day when your life was on the line, you totally wanted to just expend all your calories by lifting heavy things. That was the way people did it back then. 
Yeah, they were obviously really like all the muscle they had was from like building stuff, really building houses, rock formations, pyramids, things of that nature. Brendan Schumer says he's about to come out with his own brand of DECA. Yeah, maybe that's true. DECA? I don't know. What is that? It's, uh, I don't know what the real name for it is. It's some kind of um, performance enhancing. Yeah, okay. Okay. Lane Hughes, what's DECA, man? I'm not saying that you take it, bro. You look you look like a Jack natural, but maybe you know more than we do. Uh, price is coming down. This is a boring market, jeez. Yeah, man. We're going to dump. No, we're going to pump. I'm at basically break even. I might, I might close the trade because here's the thing. Yeah. Shout out to Crypto Sasquatch. Shout out to <laughs> Lane Hughes. His abs were so extended, just so obvious. Yeah, what's up with the ads, man? I wish I had ads. Oh, like that. It, it, it was. Did you hear? It was like it's it's implants. Like it's. Is that true? I heard that was not true. I, I don't know if it's true, but there's a lot of speculate. Like I've watched some analysis videos, like comparing that to other people that have had ab implants, and it looks kind of convincing. Everybody, if you're not subscribed to Evan Aldo, go subscribe. Robert Bonar in the chat just posted the. Uh, yeah, appreciate the link. you guys. Bro, are you are you on Twitter? Twitter? Are you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter. Yeah, Real Evan Aldo on Twitter. I'm also on Twitch. My live streams are exclusively on Twitch because my they pay me for them to be exclusively there. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, they do. Um, you think I should do that? You think I should do that? Um, I, I don't know if you're. I don't know if I don't know if you're good enough, man. I don't know I don't if you're going to make so, it. Yeah. Probably not. What, what's funny too is like there were some channels that when they did it, when they offered it to me, like I told some other channels um, that were a little bit bigger than me about it, and they um, they reached out and Twitch was like, no, no, you're not good enough. Interesting, man. I don't know why they picked, yeah, they picked me over um over like a lot of I think I just got lucky. They were they were just trying to experiment with some channels and um it's only like a four month thing, so after it ends, I think it'll like um I don't know if they'll continue just giving you a monthly stipend just to stand there. I can't find you on Twitter, bro. I'm looking for you on Twitter right now. And oh, Twitter, it's real Evan Aldo. Oh, just real, not the real. Oh uh, no, no, just real. Okay. Just real. Oh, you follow yeah. me. I don't follow you. Like real Donald Trump, real Evan Aldo. I was going to tag you in my tweet, but... Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. It's only like a four I have the check mark, um, but I don't know if my impersonator accounts probably have it too, I wonder. Did, did you pay Did you pay for that? Yeah, I did, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You want to know something um, weird? Yeah, go ahead. So my, my Twitter, right, when I, was in a, when I was in a band, this is the same Twitter account that I had when I was in a band. <laughs> yeah. All right, I deleted all my old tweets, but the reason I kept the same account for Jason Casper is because I had the blue check mark, but I didn't like oh, do anything wow. to get it. They just gave it to me. What? Yeah, they just gave it to me. This was maybe in like back 2010, back, 2011. Maybe back then everybody got it or something. If you uploaded your license, maybe or something. No, I didn't do any of that, bro. It, wow. I, it, they somehow knew I was like in a band and like i don't, I don't know you were an actual like did it have a lot of followers like did the and i had more than i do now yeah oh so everybody unfollowed you yeah basically i stopped posting for like a decade and oh i didn't realize that that i thought they would just be a bunch of dead accounts following you uh, well yeah or maybe i mean i kept some of them i i, I didn't ha i definitely never had more than like twelve thousand followers Maybe that's what you needed back then if you had 10,000. Did you apply to get the check mark or they just gave it no, to you? I just one day realized I had the blue check and I felt like a boss. I'm like, yeah, what's up? I got the blue check, you know? Huh. And then and Sweet. then as soon as I changed the Twitter name from my my old uh, Twitter name to the Jason Casper Twitter name, uh, it went away. It away. I thought I was going to be able to look super legit, you know? I'm thinking, man, I'm going to bust into this Twitter space. With oh, the blue so check mark, probably, baby. You yeah. probably should have kept the old name then. No, 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 no. But it wouldn't have made sense. Yeah, no one would understand yeah, because yeah, it was probably what was it, Jason Casper or Metal yeah, or what? Yeah, it, was so, it was something like that, man. You know, something like that. But, uh, but, uh, but here's the thing, guys. I have to head out because we have games in the Discord in 14 minutes. Yeah, man, I gotta get going too, Evan, bro. It was an absolute yeah. pleasure to have you on stream, man. An absolute. Yeah, thank pleasure. you so much, man. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, always a pleasure to be here. I always appreciate the talks. Always learn something from you. Likewise, People, yeah. Oh, shit. Your trade is doing good. Bro, it's up, what now? $76. Yeah, baby. It just popped, yeah. You know, sometimes that song I play has a, a delayed <laughs> effect. The afterburn effect. It's the afterburn yeah, effect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Sorry for using the language. Really, are we going to get demonetized or something because of that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't care if yeah. people cuss on my channel. I mean, I don't cuss yeah. in my own life, but uh, I don't care if people cuss. It's yeah. funny. People like they're <laughs> people like cuss around me, and they're like, "Oh, sorry." It's like well, I don't care. Do what you want. <laughs> yeah, what I did for the channel. I forget how YouTube works. Oh my god, it's still. Oh my, how much are you ahead right now? One hundred seventeen, baby. One hundred seventeen. We up in the green. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was right. I got lucky on that one. About to take my wife on a date, baby. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Anyway, man, I will see you. Um, definitely want to have you on my channel or on Twitch or something at some point here. Um, guys, uh, check out YouTube.com forward slash Evanaldo, Twitch.tv forward slash Evanaldo Crypto, and Twitter, real Evan, at real Evanaldo on Twitter. Those are three things. Um, be aware of fake accounts. Um, yeah. So, yeah. All right, guys. God bless everybody. And uh, I will see y'all. And Evan, I'll see you maybe later. So, peace. Yeah. I'll see you, man. Peace.